minute. Who are you? My thoughts exactly, Kazoo Kid. What's going on, Jake Paulers? The inner product between the eigenstates of position and momentum. What the hell are you? <laughs> Not gonna talk, huh? But we can do this either the easy way or the hard way. We got ourselves a tough guy. Let's see if a few matrix elements will loosen his tongue. Since we are going the hard way, there's a couple things you need to know first. One, the wave functions in the coordinate and the momentum representation are connected by Fourier transform. And two, to define it in a given representation in the first place, we take our abstract Ket vector and Hilbert space and take the inner product with the basis we want to represent it in in the first place. Cool, now let's do a quick refresher on calculating matrix elements because that's gonna be an important part of this video. The first thing to understand before calculating these matrix elements is that the position and momentum eigenstates form a complete set of orthonormal basis vectors in their own representation. What I mean is we can form a completeness relation out of them. In other words, we can say that the integral of the outer product of these position uh, dx is equal to the identity matrix. Why is this an integral? Well, these Ket vectors are not discrete. They're actually continuous, also known as improper Dirac vectors. So since they're continuous, that summation becomes an integral. Same thing goes for momentum. If we integrate over the outer product of momentum eigenstates dp, we get the identity matrix as well. Okay. When in doubt with these whole Dirac notation problems, always insert completeness because what you effectively do with this is it's a way of changing your basis or representing something in a given basis. Let's go ahead and calculate the matrix elements of the position operator. So we'll have some state, we'll call it phi and x hat and psi. We want to know what this is. Well, we have to specify a given representation. Are we going to do this in coordinate space or momentum space? Let's go ahead and do it in coordinate space first. Even though you see an x here, that doesn't mean it's automatically in coordinate space. It's just a more natural basis to represent it in. But in order to actually do that, we're going to have to insert completeness. Now, the position operator, or operators as a whole, are sort of like continuous square matrices. And in order to transform a square matrix, you're going to have two transformation coefficients. And what that tells you is we're going to have to insert completeness twice. So we can say that this is equal to the integral, which comes from this uh, completeness relation here. Here's our phi, and we're going to insert completeness here, and we'll call it x prime. So there's our completeness, and now we're having our operator, x hat. Completeness again, let's call it x. And I'm calling these different indices just because since we're integrating twice, we're going to have two integrals, so we're just going to keep them separate, even though they're both just really inserting one. Okay, x and psi, dx prime, dx. Cool, well we know what this is and we know what this is. These are just going to be those wave functions in coordinate space. So let's go ahead and insert that in. So this is equal to the integral of psi star, because this is the bra vector of x prime. Uh, since the x hat is a Hermitian operator, we can act from the left or the right. It actually doesn't matter. Let's have it act to the left, which is going to give us an x prime. And then it's just going to have uh, x prime dot x. Since these are orthonormal, this is going to give us a delta function. So delta x prime minus x. Why is it a delta function instead of the Kronecker delta? Well, this operator and these cat vectors are continuous. So since they're continuous, it's not discretized uh, entries in the vector or these matrices, which means that we can't just have a discrete Kronecker delta. We need something continuous. Kronecker delta becomes a delta function. Okay, so now we've got this, and we've got psi of x. We've got our dx prime dx. Our dx prime integral, well, this is just this delta function is going to pick out the value for x prime equal to x. So all of these x primes just become x's. Okay, so we've got psi star of x, x, psi of x, dx. And this should look pretty familiar. Negative infinity to infinity. I just wanted to do a quick refresher on this because we're going to go through the exact same procedure to do this in momentum space, but we're going to get a seemingly different answer. So I wanted to make sure everyone was clear on how to do the easier version. Let's do it in momentum space now. 
Since now we're just going to be taking matrix elements of the same operator, but in a different space, we're going to go through the exact same thing, but instead we're going to be inserting completeness with momentum space. Okay, so let's get started. So this is saying that psi x hat, I mean, fine, I always say that wrong, I don't know why. This is equal to the integral, and we're going to insert completeness. This is phi p prime p prime x hat p p uh, and psi. And we're integrating over dp prime and dp. Great. Again, we already know what these are. These are just the wave functions in the momentum space. But we don't actually know what this is. Right now, we're not assuming that we know that our operator in momentum space can be given by that derivative with respect to p. Assume we don't know that. So we're actually going to have to insert this completeness relation. That way we can actually tackle this in some way. Because right now we don't know what this is. Okay, so this is equal to. And since we're inserting completeness in x and x prime, we're going to have two more integrals. So this is going to be equal to the integral. We've got psi star of p prime. And then we've got p prime. Let's call it x prime. So inserting completeness here x prime, x hat, x, x, oops, p, p, psi, dp prime, dp, dx prime, dx, perfect. And now you can see why I'm taking these matrix elements in the first place. Because in expanding one more time, now we have what we're interested in in the first place. So if we can simplify this a bit, we'll be able to see what this thing is here. Okay? And now we know what this is, we know what this is, and we know what this is. So let's simplify this a little bit. And I'm also going to collect all of my terms that have P prime and have P on one side. Not to mention, this is just going to give us an X prime delta X minus... Let me just write this out, because that's too much to just say. This is equal to the integral psi star p prime, uh, whatever this is, p prime x prime. This is going to give us an x prime delta x prime minus x, whatever this is, x p and psi p. Okay, we know that this is just going to pick out x prime equal to x. Let's go ahead and write that. We'll just go down here and we'll go over here eventually, I guess. So this is equal to the integral psi star. I'm going to start collecting my p primes on one side and my p's on the other side. So let's, can you even see this anymore? Yes, you can. So here we go, blocking this off. Psi star of p prime. This x prime becomes an x because this is picking out x prime equal to x. So this is p prime x dp prime. Okay, so that's 1. This, is, this x prime is just becoming an x. And then we have our second integral. And we've got our psi of p and x p. x p dp. And all of this is integrated over dx. Great. Believe it or not, we're almost done. I erased all the messy stuff so that this could become a bit more clear. So this is what we got in momentum space by taking this matrix element. But we also know that since this should be, you know, basis independent, whatever we get at the end should be whatever we get at the end. It shouldn't depend on what basis we represent it in. So, in coordinate space, we got that this is equal to the integral of psi star of x, x, psi of x, dx. Momentum space, coordinate space. They should both give us the same answer, which tells us that this term here that's in terms of psi and p prime, this, we can identify with this psi of x term. Similarly, this term that's in terms of psi and p, we can identify with the psi of x term. In other words, psi of x is equal to uh, the integral of psi of p, xp, 
dp. And that looks an awful lot like our Fourier transform up here. The only thing is that it requires that this x of p, or x times p, must be our transformation coefficient, which can be expressed as 1 over root 2 pi h bar times e to the i on h bar px. And there we have it, folks. This mysterious beast, the mask came right off. We discovered its secrets. We got our elbows dirty. Is that a saying? That's probably not a saying. Uh, but that also tells you that if we take the Hermitian conjugate, we just get our minus i, and that would correspond to this term right here. I don't know about you guys, but I thought that this was pretty cool. This is basically just a transformation coefficient. And in linear algebra, transformation coefficients are always in terms of the old basis and the new basis. So at the end of the day, it's all just linear algebra. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.